Hello, I am Wolf from Barefoot Bushcraft, and I want to thank you so much for tuning into this video. Today, we are going to go through a tutorial on how to make your very own Indo-European moccasins, also known as Viking shoes, also known as Gilly brogues, uh, also known as Iron Age shoes. They're really kind of a cool thing to make. You're, I'm going to go through a tutorial on right from uh, creating the pattern to cutting the hide to making them fit your feet. They are absolutely amazing. And don't worry, no matter what you decide to choose to call them when you're wearing them, someone on the internet will tell you you're wrong because that's the internet. But anyways, let's get started with this tutorial. All right, so the first thing you're going to need is a pattern for these. So this is my pattern here, and uh, it happens to fit my foot very well. Um, I can do a quick cut to show you what that should look like. So there I just dropped it on the floor and you can see at the very back, heel goes to the back, front goes here like this, and there's enough room on all sides for those to kind of fold over my toes, uh, like you can see in the beginning of the video there. So that's kind of the size that we need. These patterns, of course, you can get off of Pinterest. Um, I've seen them. You can just, you know, use your favorite search engine and type in, you know, Gilly Brogue pattern and it will come up. Then you can get it to the right size for your body type and your foot shape. So now that I know this is the right size for, for my foot shape, uh, and left and right, they're the exact same pattern, by the way. So it doesn't really matter. You only need one pattern for both feet. Uh, you're going to need your tools. So the big tools is going to be scissors, uh, whatever is your favorite pair of scissors to cut both the pattern and then of course the leather after. You're going to need some uh, waxed cotton thread, heavy gauge wax cotton thread, um, and then the sewing needle that goes with it. Optionally, uh, you could punch these holes uh, in here with a hole punch. So if you happen to have a hole punch, uh, which I do, you're certainly welcome to use that to get a nice, good, clean punch. Uh, so you can use any, uh, you know, a good size hole. The hole has to be big enough, of course, to get your leather through. Then the next thing, of course, is uh, some kind of leather strapping, which is going to hold all these closed. So I've got everything I need here, um, except the leather. This beautiful, golden, rich leather is going to be turned into my ghillie brogues or viking shoes or whatever it is you want to call them uh indo-european shoe whatever there's lots of different names for them but these are going to be what it will be made out of now uh see how thick it is and this is uh brain tan buffalo oh my gosh it is so beautiful even to the touch it feels like cream like i just i can't uh, believe how beautiful that these are they're just they're just gorgeous uh, now you're gonna looking at a lot of money for these um so like there you go there it is right there. You know, at the time I bought this, uh, it was almost $200 just for the leather. But I mean, I can get a lot of pairs out of these. Uh, but it's nice and super thick. Uh, beautiful, creamy, uh, creamy, creamy texture to it. It's just what I need. Uh, one side note to know about these. Please, anytime you work with leather, understand that in order for this leather to be the leather that it is, an animal had to die. Um, as part of your rewilding process, nature is, you should understand, nature is sacred. With nature being sacred, an animal, a moose, had to be shot and killed and gutted and all the stuff that happens to it in order for me to get this leather. So it's very, very important that at all times I show honor and respect. Um, extra pieces of leather, don't, don't throw them in the garbage. They need to be taken into a forest and buried. Um, so please be respectful of the leather and understand this was a living, breathing thing, just like you are. This had hopes and dreams and everything else, and someone killed it to make leather for us. So it's very, very special that way. Um, but anyways, um, so the process will get started by first we're going to get rid of this. We're going to bring our pattern over. And once we bring our pattern over, we need to cut the pattern out. Now, my all I did, like I say, was get this, uh, get this off of Pinterest, get it the right size and shape. And they're sized, right? Like I was, you know, you, you type in like size 10 men's Gilly Brogue. This is the pattern it gives you and it tells you the size it should be. As you saw, I put my foot on it and it was the correct size. So we're just gonna cut her out. We're gonna take our scissors and uh, unceremoniously go along the lines here, try to keep the lines as straight as possible and uh, get them all cut out for ourselves. Thank you. 
So that's that. So our end result is they're going to look like this. Now these ones are well loved and all beat up, but that's what they're going to look like when they're done. Um, so if I were to take all these laces out of these and open them all up, that's what they're going to look for. It's exactly what they're going to look like. So the next thing, I'm going to make sure my, uh, my table's nice and clean here. Make sure I've got nothing on here that can get in the way or do any damage or piercing or anything like that. And then I'm just going to lay a nice piece of this material, this beautiful, beautiful buckskin out. And then I'm going to take a marker and I'm going to trace it out. All right, so here's my pattern on my buckskin. As snug to the corners I can get it. So I, you, you don't want to waste this stuff. Number one, it's expensive. And again, number two, this is the beautiful animal. It gifted its life for us. Um, so here we go. So here it is. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to take this. Okay, and we're just going to trace it. Now, the one thing to remember, see, this is the outside. This is the inside. You want to put your pattern on the inside. Okay, and the reason is, you see, like, what if I score it like this, right? And, oh, I don't want that on my outside that the world will see for the remaining life of these shoes. So you want to make sure that it's on the inside. Um, that makes it a little bit more forgiving for you. <laughs> She's all done. Just make sure all your, your pieces are cut where they need to be cut and they all look the same. So that's good. So this is the exact same as this when it's all done. So now the next thing we need to do is kind of take a look at how this built is how this built. And you see either all of these pieces are going to be like a hand and they're going to go whoop over the top of your foot, just like you saw in the beginning of the video. So what we need to do is make sure we now we take our punch Okay, and we put holes in the corners of all of these tabs right there. And then, believe it or not, unless you want to add a sole to them, they're almost done. Like, it doesn't take that long to build these. Remember, our ancestors built these, right? With, certainly with know-how that rivals what most of us have. Uh, lots of hard work and ingenuity. So that's that. So I'm going to punch all the holes, and then um, we're going to put the back together, sew it up, and she's done. these guys is we got to get this back fastened and how we're going to do that is it's just like this one so this is how it's going to look so you see we have the left side and the right side and they fold together like this and then this strip comes up over the top and fastens them together so one two just like this so basically you want that and there we go and that makes your heel cup as well you can see that right and basically that's that. And then this is just gonna fold over. And again, that makes a nice little heel cup. And what this does when it when they're together like that um, is it allows it to, your heel won't fall out when you're wearing them. So we're gonna go ahead and put a few holes through here and then through here uh, and then stitch them up. Thread our needle here 
like that okay um you can thread it you can sew it however you want what i like to do is i like the double thread but that's just me it's okay if you don't like it um and then i just tie a knot in here and that knot will help the project not fly apart you just want to feed that knot down to the very end okay get her nice and snug there we go all right so what I will usually do just to make it fancy is I'll cut that off. Okay. All right. So now is our first set of sewing. If you're not that good at sewing, this is not that hard. You're going to take it. You're going to find the hole. You're going to match up with the hole. Well, basically it. See the hole? Push it through. That's kind of what the sewing is all about. And hopefully if your holes are good enough, this should just push right through. Okay. Now, what I do to start my my thread okay see i'm going to leave it loose so there's a loop right there then i'm going to take it in through this hole into the second hole since they're all sized and now like this you see now what that does is that just locks that in place so as i continue to sew there we go it's not going to get in my way now again through that hole through this hole and i'm getting it where it needs to be just like that. Now, if you want to make it fancy, what you can do is you can go back through every second hole um, if you want to do that. And I'll probably do that but off camera. Like this. Through this hole here. And like that. Now it's coming along. It doesn't take long to do this. But you see how here it's every second hole, right? And then here it's every second hole. So when you get to the end, you can return stitch it and come all the way back through the opposite holes. Makes your leather stronger and it makes it just a little fancier. Uh, kind of a little bit more sewing machine like if that's, uh, that's your thing. And you can see it requires zero effort on my part. I am not fighting with this leather because I pre-punched all these holes or mostly pre-punched the holes. You see? So the hole is right there, right? So I put it through right here. And it should just slide right through that hole. It may need, just, like if the hole isn't perfect, but see? No actual effort on my part to get that where I need it to be. And that's what you want. This shouldn't be a hard project. Remember, your ancestors did this out in open fields and in houses with without furnaces or electricity, right? And if they can do this and do, have done an amazing job historically, so can you. This is a historic piece. This is something that if you have ancestry or lineage from anywhere in Europe, whether you're from Poland or whether you're from anywhere, you had ancestors that literally built these themselves, right? Okay. Well, it's starting to look a little bit like a shoe now because it kind of does to me. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a couple holes across here. So that way when this goes up, I don't have to stop my threading. But uh, yeah, so that's that. Now we're going to stitch up this side, then stitch all the way around. And the stitching part is done. Then you literally just have to try them on and bubble buoy, we're done. <laughs> it gets kind of fun and interesting this is where now you get to test fit your creation make sure everything fits now the cool thing is if you got like super slavic wide feet or you've got narrow feet these will fit no matter what right because they're custom built see how i can i can even wear them i can open them up uh this is a whole other video but i can open them up put socks heavy socks on with them anything i want so there we go all right so before I put these holes up and finish them, let's do a quick test fit. Oi! 
All right, so let's do the test fit. So this goes like this, obviously. This is really awkward, but that's okay. Okay, so that's that. Now we're just gonna pull them tight. Make sure they're the correct width and everything. Look at that. Okay, first knot goes left over right. Okay, then you're gonna go right over left. And if you do it right, it should make that nice little eight. Okay, and then you put this through here. Okay, and then this one goes through here. Okay, and then this one goes through here. And hot damn, we got a pair of shoes. Well, a shoe. I have to get the second one made. There we have it. Just like that. Tie her in a knot. And you are ready for action with this. How's that look? Right on camera. All done. You see that side? See how they have a lot of decent protection. They have a lot of vents and holes in them. And I totally made them myself while I was here with you. The next thing you could do if you wanted to is do what I do on mine. And that is buy this stuff. This is called crepe rubber. Right, it's ridiculously expensive, but I can take the crepe rubber and I can put them on this, on the sole here, and then they'll be like this set. Problem is, as you can see, these are real beat up, um, and the crepe rubber doesn't last long, especially if you use them really hard, like I wear these on a lot of asphalt and stuff. But yeah, so there we go, genuine moose hide shoes. There we have it. So uh, yeah, it was pretty simple. And uh, I'm going to now do the other one. All right, so here is what they look like on. There's a side view right there. And uh, the inside view right there. And yeah, so I am totally, totally happy with how these turned out. These are awesome. And uh, if you like this video and you found it helpful, I would like to encourage you to please like and subscribe and share this video. I am Wolf for Barefoot Bushcraft. I'm so excited about these shoes. I'm so excited that you took the time to watch this video. And of course, please consider subscribing.